Hello, my name is Frank Buffalo Hyde. I'm Onondaga uh, Beaver Clan, and this is my exhibition, Eyewitness Culture. The title, Eyewitness Culture, um, is uh, a correlation between our digital persona and our real persona. So the eye is meant to be a reference to the iPhone. And um, I just started the show as an investigation into the difference between each of our own realities and how it's perceived on social media and filtered through our digital devices. Um, a lot of the work here is a reference to culture as well. Um, the show was originated in Santa Fe, New Mexico, which is a mecca for uh, tourism. And uh, there's a lot of rich culture in, in the city there. So you'll see a lot of the um, paintings are depictions of the Native American cultures there and sort of the tourist uh, apparatus that exists around it. The show was uh, originally opened at the Museum of Indian Arts and Culture, I think in 2016, and um, it was extended. It was there for a year and a half, almost two years. Yeah, I mean, it's great to see these pieces again. It's been at least that long since I've seen them in person, and uh, it's like seeing old friends. Walking around, when you see a painting, you can remember exactly what was going on in your life and days in the studio that you spent looking at the pieces. So it's really great to see them all together again in person uh, after the pandemic. Uh, this piece is titled The New New and it was a reference, it's like a pop culture reference to like when you get something that's um, the latest gear, the latest technology. Like if you get like new sneakers, you have the, new, the newest uh, iPhone. Uh, people like, like, you know, it's a reference of like, I got the new new. But for me, this was, uh, at the time of the show, this was a breakthrough painting for me in a lot of different ways. And it was the one, that I struggled the most with in the exhibition. And when it became sort of the headliner of the exhibition, the introduction to the rest of the show, I've had mixed feelings about it. At the time, I was like, maybe this isn't the strongest piece. Maybe we could, I could have used other pieces, but um, seeing it now after the time has passed and I'm glad that it is sort of like the introduction that sets the tone for the rest of the show. What's, what's new about this sh painting is the perspective. Um, it does embody exactly what I was trying to capture in the exhibition as far as the viewer, which is you, whoever's watching, looking at the painting, um, is recording or uh, streaming a dance demonstration. Uh, in the Southwest, they do hold dance demonstrations for the public, and they are for educational and celebratory purposes. So this was a literal embodiment of what I was going for. And I think that's one reason why I had such an issue with it, because I'm not usually this literal. Like, the concepts that I was describing are sort of alluded to in different ways, but this is a literal representation of somebody taking themselves out of their own reality by documenting it. And for it to take place on a two-dimensional plane was just like mind-blowing for me. It was it's like, it, this is either the most successful painting in the show or it's the worst one. So I'd always go back and forth like, um, and then these artistic moments in the painting, I call them, People are always like, like, what's that? Like, what's this? And I just, I laugh and I always tell them, like, those are the artistic portions of the painting. They, they don't need to be explained, they just are. So yeah, when I came around the corner uh, this morning and saw this painting, it was like, you know, when you see like your favorite cousin or your favorite uncle, it's just like, you pick up right where you left off. This 
is FaceSwap. There was an app that came out early uh, when the iPhones, mid iPhones came out, I, for, I forget what it was called, but it was uh, uh, something that came with uh, this app and, and, and you could like put your phone next to somebody or get next to somebody and they would like move your faces over on the other one. And if you've ever seen pictures of those, um, there's some horrific results. Uh, some really like ungodly things come out of those face swaps. So um, in my imagination, of course, I wanted to you know see what would happen if Joe Dirt and um, his good buddy did a face swap and uh, this is what happened. And uh, I'm glad that the show that this even made it into the show because my co-curator, um, absolutely hated this painting. She did not want this painting in the show. And it was my favorite painting. I was like, how could you not put this in the show? She's like, I hate it. It's, it's just gross and it just, I don't get it. And I don't, I, I, it's not going in the show. And I'm like, it absolutely is going in the show. So we argued about it for a while. And it's in the show. But um, this, is what I was, this is what I was talking about earlier about these are like sort of references to technology and they sort of manifest themselves in a painting, but not necessarily framed by like a digital device. So in this painting in particular, you're already in a device interacting with an application. So it's uh, still one of my favorites because it is kind of disturbing and silly and weird all at the same time. But uh, yeah. Who doesn't like Joe Dirt? No. Um, for a reason, because I still have a little bit of um, Native Americans being represented in Hollywood in my work, and um, Joe Dirt's friend, I, I forget what his character's name is, but the actor that plays him, um, Adam, Beach. Adam Beach, yes. He had, uh, he's been in Santa Fe working on stuff a lot, so he's, he's like a, like Santa Fe's celebrity when he's there. He'll be walking around with his family. And you know, in Santa Fe, people don't bother celebrities. That's why they like it there. You know, they just treat them as like a nuisance, like, get out of my way, I'm trying to get my breakfast burrito. And it's like, oh my God, I'm just so real. But everybody's just like watching them the whole time. Anyway, um, I wanted to have Adam Beach exist in my, in my sh show because he is a native actor and he, has done a lot of native roles, and he also is sort of outspoken for that. And um, I just thought it would be fun. When I came up with the idea to paint an application, like I had to go back to that sort of discussion. Who wants to see a painting of an application? You just get your phone out and do it. Like who would, that's stupid. Is it art? None. Of course it is. It's stupid. I mean, initially like art, Art functions on one level that it's not necessary, but it is. Uh, this piece is Round Dance number six, Pickup Sticks. And the Round Dance series was a comment on the Washington football team. Uh, the Washington football team that recently changed their name from the Redskins. Uh, some of you are familiar with the Redskins being a derogatory term towards Native Americans. Um, so in the first iterations of these, uh, it was a football huddle with the Washington football team, you know, much like they are here. And to me, it looked like a round dance. And I thought it would be ironic to make um, the iconic football team that has the logo that's racist be doing something that's meant to be welcoming, uh, like a round dance for, for the community. So that's where the initial painting was born, is that to sort of depict that sort of irony. I think it's ir ironic that a football team, an organization that uses, that
that used a logo that was you know really dehumanizing but also um, pays its players like millions of dollars to also de dehumanize them. This went on to become a series and this is number six and what started to happen was that in each painting as it progressed they started to have more indigenous regalia so they you know they started to have like moccasins rendered on them and then they started to carry staffs and then they started to have horns and this is pretty late in the series um, and this actually was a replacement painting the original painting was purchased by the Autry Museum and then um, removed from the exhibition before it went to the Gilcrease and this one replaced it um, so yeah I mean it, it's also an example of how I have experimented with different techniques of making the painting. Um, this one is a lot of spray paint just being spray paint. Um, the swirl behind the figures is just, you know, a simple action and then of course the drips. Uh, this is a buffalo burger study, and if you're familiar with my work, there are a lot of buffalo burgers happening. For whatever reason, people really respond to these, and so it allows me to investigate them in a lot of different ways. Um, bison, buffaloes, were uh, uh, sustenance for a lot of indigenous tribes in North America for a long time. And one of the ways that the settlers, as they pushed west, we're trying to get rid of the Native Americans as they would get rid of the buffalo. So they would have these trains that they would sell tickets to where you could point rifles out the window and just shoot out of either side of the train and kill a buffalo. And that's what you were paying for, it was a chance to kill a buffalo. And they wouldn't take anything of the buffalo, no meat, no um, horns, no hooves, no, um, no leather, no fur, um, they were just killing them just to kill them so that the natives wouldn't have anything to eat. Um, starvation as a tactic. And as a result, their numbers dwindled uh, at the turn of the century, but um, recently in modern times, the buffalo meat has been making a resurgence, the bison have been making a resurgence as a low fat beef alternative. So we have all, we have all of these buffalo farms now, there's, you know, Buffaloes are everywhere, but people, when they see these paintings, they either, they have one of two reactions. One of them is like, cool, buffalo burger, oh, that, you know, they're delicious. Or, oh, would you really eat that? Oh, like, you know, but I guess they have the same reactions with cows and stuff or anything that has eyes and a heartbeat. But, um, like, where do you think meat comes from? This painting is called uh, Bigfoot Basin. And if you've ever been in Santa Fe in the fall, you'll, you know that the ski basin uh, where the aspens are, um, as the trees start turning, it just looks like the whole side of the mountain is on fire. And it's super beautiful and it's super cool to walk through. And it's definitely a favorite thing to do for people that are traveling through or live there in Santa Fe. Um, and I was just imagining like what would happen if like a Bigfoot kind of just walked through a landscape, but also um, there's a few paintings in this show that I kind of um, allowed myself a guilty pleasure of doing something that was pretty, and this is one of them. Um, I made the painting without him initially, so it was just, it was just the aspens turning. And if you look at it like that, it's like, oh, it's a landscape. It's a beautiful landscape. <clears throat> but then I couldn't live with myself because I'm not a landscape painter. I don't make pretty paintings. And uh, what can I do to make this like cool and commentary? I was like, I know. We'll put a big foot on it. Um, and it's also one of my areas of interest. I'm, in I'm interested in cryptozoology, the paranormal, uh, zombies, 
And I have my older sister to thank for that. She was into all that weird crap. And of course, as a younger brother, I got into all of her stuff and became interested in it too. Um, but the, the, the style of the painting I wanted to talk about was more influenced by French Impressionists um, like Cezanne. I had a show in the south of France when I was in my 20s and I exhibited in, a, in an old Roman monastery for a month. That's Cezanne country, like everything, um, all of the travel brochures and the art magazines had, you know, stories with pictures and photos. So um, it influenced me and I always wanted to do a painting sort of in the style of his work um, and beautiful. So I, this was me making a beautiful painting and um, trying to make it more interesting. So being in the midst of this show again after a number of years, obviously the paintings haven't changed, but I think myself as an artist, as a painter, I've changed quite a bit. And it's really nice to see this exhibition again in person in its well, the paintings in their entirety and to be with them and to see the surfaces and to revisit the, the thoughts um, that went into making them. And I think if you're familiar with my work, you know that the one constant in my work is progress. And for me, progress is um, improvement. And I think as a painter, that's what I'm after. I'm, I'm always refining and redefining my process. At the time of the exhibition, this painting called Counting Coup was me pushing for a breakthrough, uh, both in subject matter and in application. Uh, I, was, I was after that thing that was just out of my reach and it really bothered me because I couldn't describe, I couldn't define, I didn't know what it was, but I was, I was on it, I was looking for it. Um, while the painting is about how social media can be used in certain situations to keep people safe and to keep people honest and to keep people alive, um, those messages have not gone away in their relevance or their influence or their, or their power in my work. And hopefully what has stayed with me and what has progressed is the investigation and the validation of mark making. Uh, this is Zombie Nation and it is one of the first um, zombie paintings that made it out of the studio. I'd been working on zombie designs sort of off and on. And again, I struggle with um, showing these as part of my work because I had, to, I had to, in my mind, justify that it was that it was art. You know, I always have that question, like, is it art? Does any, would anybody give a crap about it? And then um, this was right around sort of the middle towards the end of like the Walking Dead TV show on, on TV. And, you know, zombies are super popular lately but I've always you know I've seen all the old like George R. Romero movies and like all of the goofy zombie movies that were made in the 80s that were like not necessarily high production value but they're just just fun um, with you know like chicken gizzards and syrup for blood and all that kind of stuff um, but anyway I digress um, this is also another attempt, I mean, if you look at this painting without the zombies in it, it's, it's a beautiful, serene western landscape. And so I have this thing where I'll only allow myself to make a beautiful painting if I can put something cool in it as well. You know, I don't, I'm not, I don't make paintings just to make beautiful things. 
Um, sometimes they happen to be beautiful. Um, but yeah, so I was able to exercise a couple of my art muscles on this painting. Um, one, Western art, um, and two, zombies. So this painting is a tribe called Redcoats, and it's a play on words. It's a visual play on images as well. Um, in the 70s, this punk band called the Sex Pistols released a single called God Save the Queen, and on that single was a portrait of Queen Elizabeth, and then scrawled across her face was Sex Pistols or this is the Sex Pistols, something like that. Um, that image has always been like burned on my skull for some reason, it's like a really powerful promotion tool. So when you're like this like angry teenager looking for like angry teenager music, you see that and you're like, oh, that's, that's really gotta be for me. So, um, and then I wondered what that would look like updated, like what sort of updated Sex Pistol cover might look using the same references. So this was after the second child was born to um, the, the royals, the new royals, and I specifically obscured the children because, you know, they didn't choose to be royals, they were just kind of born into it. and. Um, so it's a, va it's a play on that early 70s album cover updated to the, to the 2000s with the new royal family. Um, and also the, the title is a reference to a, a tribe called Red, which was this um, hip hop sort of uh, dubstep group from First Nations Canada. And they just recently changed their name from a tribe called Redcoats to the Hallucination. And um, I just thought it was a verbal pun because the British Empire at one point had colonized most of the world and they colonized Canada and um, of course America. So whatever reason, we still have an interest in the royals and for the English Empire. I mean, I don't personally, but my mother's like totally into it. And um, I ask her all the time, like, why do, why do people still care about the royal family? She's like, I don't know, why don't you? I'm just like, um, I just use them when their orbit sort of comes into my art practice. So yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's just sort of having a little bit of fun with the royal family and some punk rock. Um, so if you're interested in what I'm working on, you can find me on social media. Uh, it's just my full name, Frank Buffalo Hyde, on Instagram as well as Facebook. And then you can check out my website. It's also my full name, www.frankbuffalohyde.com. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs>